Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from ComputerGuardGuard.com This tutorial will look at using Excel to create a lottery number generator. I'm going to start off by looking at the setup of the workbook. In this workbook we have two sheets, a calculation sheet and a draw sheet. Now the calculation sheet has been set up with a list of the 49 ball numbers that are going to be produced at random from this lottery number draw. There's also a range of cells numbered 1 to 6, which are going to be used to produce 6 of the 49 balls at random. There are a couple of columns set up ready to provide the randomization side of this. Two formulas will be entered in columns A and B. The draw sheet, on the other hand, is the presented side of it. This is where the 6 numbers will be produced, and the normal end user will not see the calculations being used. That sheet will be hidden, and this will show the six numbers produced uh, like magic. Back onto the calculation sheet, and we'll start off by using the RAND function inside column A. So starting from A2 equals RAND with an open and closing bracket. This is a RAND function, and when copied down, this RAND function will produce a random number between 0 and 1. This will provide a randomization error for a lottery number generator, ensuring that each ball is picked at complete random. The next step is to rank these balls. The idea being that I will pick the first six numbers. But the first six numbers are going to appear completely at random because of this random function. But now these numbers are at random, they need to be ranked. What are the first six in that list? To do that, I will use a rank function. The rank function will be used to rank or position them balls. I'm going to use the mixed reference, looking at cell A2, to find that random number A2 within the list of random numbers. So I'll use an absolute cell reference now to look at... that list of random numbers. So there's my rank function entered. Look at A2 and find its position within the range of A2 to A50. Now at the moment there's a chance that the rand function may produce the exact same number twice. It's quite slim and unlikely, but there's a possibility that in these 49 rand functions that the same number is going to be produced again. To counteract that, however unlikely possibility, I'm going to add in the count if function. And the count if function will be used to look at the ranking in column B within the range of cells in column B to make sure that it was unique. And we'll make it unique if it's not. That is the full formula that we will enter. So at the moment, starting from B2, it's not really required. Starting from B3, it will start to expand the second half of that range. So you've got a mixed reference for B1, and the end of the cell range is B1 in a relative manner. So as I copy it down, that will expand to say, for example, look for B3 within the range of B2 to B3. In the unlikely attempt that that number is not unique and they're the same, do something about it, take one away, making sure it is not the same number. Okay, a ranking of 47 for that first one. I will now select that formula and I'm going to copy this all the way down to make sure I get some unique rankings for each ball number. Done, we have the rankings, it is beginning to take shape. Next step is on the draw sheet we need a way of looking up what are the first six numbers in this range. So let's pop to the draw sheet and we're going to use a VLOOKUP function for this starting with the first ball number in cell C7. So let's put in our VLOOKUP function. VLOOKUP. I want to look for 
ball, the first draw, ball number one in this list. And I want to look for that ball within the range of B2 to B49. Or sorry, to C50 indeed. I'm going to use my F4 key to make these ranges absolute. So look for ball number one. It's currently held in cell E1. Look for it within the range B2 to C50. So find it in column B and tell me what ball number it is from the second column. So at the end of that, I will say choose column 2. And then I'm going to enter false for the last argument to make sure it's an exact match. So ball 22 in this case. Just to save some time, I'm going to repeat that function in the other cells. Now this will be F1. This will be G1. This will be H1, nearly there. This will be I. This last one will be J. So here are our four numbers. Now one thing you might have noticed so far with our calculation sheet is every time we touch and we do something else in this workbook, these random numbers are regenerating. Then having a domino effect to rank again and then our VLOOKUP function keeps finding different numbers every time I press enter, it keeps changing. To stop that happening, we're going to produce uh, some manual calculations. So rather than automatic calculations which are happening now, and that RAND function keeps on automatically triggering changes every time I do something. On the formulas tab, I want to go for calculation options and choose manual. So now these calculations will not happen until I tell them to. Now I need a way of telling them to happen. That way is on the draw sheet is to produce a command button. I want a button that I can click which will run the lottery number generator which will tell the formulas to to activate if you will. For that I want to go for the developer tab on the ribbon. If you don't have the developer tab on the ribbon you can find it under your office button, Excel options, and in the show developer tab in the ribbon option in the popular area. I already have mine, so I'm going to cancel that on the developer tab. I'm going to choose my insert button, and I'm going to insert a command button from the form controls group. If I click on that button and I'm going to draw it onto my page where it looks around about centre to me of my ball numbers. That can always be edited at a later date. Okay, this will bring up the assigned macro dialog box. I'm going to click on new, create a new macro for this button, which is going to activate them formulas. I'm going to enter this in VBA. So we see we have a sub procedure here, currently called button to click. All we want this to do is to perform the calculations, to calculate them. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time entering the required code. First one we're putting in here is I'm asking for the calculation worksheet. A range on that worksheet 
We're going to go for the large range, which includes the RAND function and the unique referencing. And I'm going to ask them to calculate. help if I put my double quotes around my cell range. For the next one, we want to do the same thing to the six lottery balls. On the draw sheet, there were six boxes preserved for lottery balls. For that, there's obviously six cells that we need to calculate. To try and save some time, I'm going to use a with statement, which will reduce the level of coding needed for it. Similar to above, this time we're going to look at the draw sheet. And I put in my end with now. And we're going to ask each range to update. So they are C7. Dot calculate. Now I'm going to just copy that to try and save a bit of time again. Oops. Copy of that. Put it in six times. Now instead of C7, it's E7. Instead of E7, it's G7. And so on and so forth. They are separated every other cell. So it makes it quite easy for me to, to calculate what cell it is without looking. I'm going to ask each of these ranges to calculate. I'll now close down the VBE, the Visual Basic Editor. My last step, I think, is to rename that button. So lottery number generator. And here we go. This should be it. I have a calculation sheet for my calculations, which are not happening automatic now. They are waiting for me to click this button, which will run the VBA code, which runs the formulas. The RAND function provides the random. They will then be that ranked, and the VLOOKUP functions will look for them six numbers. Let's give it a click and away we go. Every time we click a fresh set of lottery ball numbers are produced. The last step may be to hide our calculation sheet by right clicking so that the usual end user would not see it. And if you wanted to be really effective, I could go to the review tab, into protect workbook, and protect the workbook structure with a password. I did they say it's optional, it's only truly protected if you enter one. A simple password for now. And that's protected. The lottery ball num generator will run. But I cannot unhide the sheets to see the calculations behind it or alter how this runs. No cheating going on. That is a lottery number generator. Hope you find the tutorial useful. Uh, please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook and check us out at computergarga.com where there are tons more tutorials, tips and tricks. Bye for now.